Today we're gonna to be creating a flake shader preset node. Uh, this is the one we are gonna be creating. You can see that it's got several controls and it's very similar to the one that's existing inside of Cinema 4D that ships with Redshift. You can see there's one called Flakes. If I drag it in, we have a series of controls. Uh, the one we're gonna be creating will not have the distance behavior in it, but if you want that feature, you can refer to my other tutorial where it's called Calculate Distance. And that tutorial dis discusses how we could do this and we could plug it in and nest it inside of our flake shader. Uh, it also does not have a 3D flakes feature, which I've used in some renders and it doesn't quite look right. It, I get mixed results with it. So I pretty much don't use it. If you do need a 3D flakes effect, there's a way of faking it, which I will be showing you later in the tutorial. Make sure you check the video description for associated project files. Also, the community tab has plenty of free resources like substance materials, espresso rigs, and After Effects presets. I'll be building up plenty of content for the community to enjoy. I'll be doing a free mega bundle giveaway for the first 500 rockstar subscribers to my channel. So make sure you smash the subscribe button to stay up to date and like the video to show your support. It's greatly appreciated. Let's dive in. Okay, so here's the controls. We've got flake scale, which is set pretty high so we could see it in the YouTube algorithms compression. We've got the gradient start and end. So you can output this into the color channel and replace the black and white values with custom flake colors. We've got a micro fresnel fall off. So that is these little flakes that you can kind of see at the edges. They're being cut off by the main fresnel. There's two fresnels. Um, there's a micro flake for now, which you can kind of see at the end where they're scaled down. So that's that. We've got remove flakes. This clamps the flakes and removes them. So if I turn this down, you can see we have reduced amount of flakes. And I know this looks kind of silly because the flakes are so large, but if you were to do this for like car paint or whatever, it'll look pretty good. So that's what that does. That clamps it. We've got in the roughness channel, you can see there's a roughness channel output and you can specify how rough the min and max values are. And we've got the Fresnel fall off amount. So you can see that we're losing some of the flakes on the edge. And so if I turn this down, basically the flakes are going to cover the whole sphere. And in some instances with uh, with certain types of shading and the way materials react, sometimes you might want to turn down the Fresnel of the flakes. I have had that as um, a desired request. And then um, the Fresnel curvature. So that is the ramp that these dissi dissipate at, which can be controlled here. I just leave it set to one. That's seems perfect. And so uh, let's build this out. So to get inside this, we're going to double click. Here's the node structure inside. It looks complicated, but it's actually very simple. Let's go ahead and build this out. Okay, so to get this started, what we're going to do is we're going to just start off with the noise. We're going to do a max on noise and I'll call this base flake. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this to cell Veroni. That is going to be the heart of the noise that we're going to be using. And I'll just plug this into the emission. So I'll set this to one, bring up the link and I'm just control clicking the node dot. And if we check this out, apply the texture, I'm going to turn off the bucket shading. Our scale is way too too small. So I'm going to set this to 50. So it's rather large. And you could potentially just use this as your flake shader if you really wanted to, to do the cheap version. Um, but it lacks depth and variation. So the beauty behind the one I created, there's flakes within flakes. So these darker flakes are subdivided and the white flakes are subdivided. And it creates like a really nice luster is we're going to load up in the black and the white channels, uh, other noises. So I'm going to take this noise, duplicate it by command click clicking and dragging and I'll load this up into the black channel. So the first color is black, second one's white and I'm going to solo this and because this is the black channel, what we want to do is we want to just take this brightness value and shrink it down and just make it a little bit darker like so. We can adjust this value later and I want to half this. So now when I come in here, you can see that my flakes in the darker areas are subdivided. So I'm going to take this and duplicate this one again. I'll first give this a name and call this flake black, duplicate it, flake white, solo it, connect it and I'll do the opposite and make this brighter. So I'll set this to 0.2. And you can see we now have subdivisions within subdivisions. And these values, you can come in here and you can adjust them to get better results. So you can see the larger flakes in there. So they'll do it until they start popping. There we go. So negative 0.6, and then I'll do positive 0.6. Okay, so there's our first level. Now, what we want to do is these brighter areas, we want to subdivide those as well and make those look a little bit better. So we'll take this one and duplicate it. And we want to focus in 
on color number two because that's the white channel. So I'm going to get rid of link in this one, link this up, add a little bit of contrast to this one. So we get something like this and I want to make this like 15%, maybe even smaller. Let's do 10%. There we go. Let's do 15. So there's our depth of flakes that we have here. And we're going to control the ratios between the scales using a value node and a multiply node in just a little bit. But let's take a look and see what else we can add. So what else we can add to this is a Fresnel fall off on this so that when we apply the roughness to this, it removes the flake roughness from these edges. And so to do that, we're going to take and we're going to add a layer, color layer. We don't need layer two, so I'm going to get rid of the mask, delete, color one, and then this mask. And we're going to take our output of our base flake, plug it into the base layer, plug this in here, solo this, turn this off. So we have basically, this is our result. Okay, next what we need to do is we want to add a Fresnel to this. So I'm going to double click, add a Fresnel, call it Fresnel mask. I like giving these a green color. And I'm going to take this color here and I'm going to swap these, set swap color and then swap colors so that we get, set this to one. So you can see there's the fall off. So what this does by unchecking this is it uses this slider instead of the IOR value. And we want this to be a mask or we can just blend it over the top. So I'm going to just do this and then we'll smooth this slider up and down. So our blending mode, we're going to set to multiply. And then you can see we now have a slider that goes to black and that's what we want. We want this value to go to straight black and the middle to be protected. And so we'll expose this parameter in a little bit. I'm going to leave this at one, but basically that's going to remove the flakes on the edges. Next, what we want to do is we want to be able to control the black and white values. What we're going to do is we're going to need a change range. And the reason I'm using the change range value version is because we want to remap these and work just like the regular float slider does or roughness values. So I'll plug this in so I can say min and max. So you can see if I turn this down, we can now turn on the possible roughness amount. Or if we want to make the base roughness brighter, we can do that as well. The next thing we want to do is we want to branch off from this and remap this with a color ramp. So I'll do ramp and this will allow the user to change the flake color. So I'll alt click or control click, sorry, bring it into this. Now we want this to be unaffected by the Fresnel amount because this is going to be our color. So I'll call this color. And this one here, I'm going to call this roughness. Move this up here. And so we can remap these colors. So I'm going to just do that real quick. I'm going to add a value. Color start. Color end. Select both of these. Make them red. And you have to use the float sliders. These sliders here, you have you cannot use. If I do a search for color, it looks the same. It allows you to input a value. It doesn't work when you plug it into this ramp. You have to use a value node. I found that out the hard way. So what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll say color. Give ourselves some more space here. Select this first node. Control click or command click. Drag the first one in, which is black. And the second one is going to be white. So we'll select our second node here. Not plug it in. And we'll check this out. So if I change this to like red, we get red. I'll leave these default. And this is an optional part, but it's nice to be able to remap the colors. So here's what we have so far. We have a base flake gets subdivided once in the black, second time in the white, and then that white gets subdivided again for a base flake. Now, when I was talking about getting 3D depth in your flake, what you can do is this micro flake that you have here, it's super subtle, so it's not going to be visible that much. Uh, you can change this to world. And then what happens is, is when the camera moves, the particle or the flake will kind of Stay, be stationary and just move around and it will create kind of a parallaxing effect between the still ones and the uh, moving flakes. So that's an option. I'm going to just leave it on object because I think it looks fine without it. Not really necessary. Now, if we were to do a depth version as well, what you would do is you would take the depth mat uh, node control rig that we made in a previous video and you plug it in from here and from here. So you just put the node right here and you connect it in and connect it back into here. So it sits in between the roughness them out and you use the same process of doing a Fresnel, this Fresnel mixer where you just take a layer node, plug it in the base, and then the distance you calculate over the top and you fade in and out a solid color. So it's actually a pretty simple setup. If you'd like to see me make a video tutorial on that, once this is published, I can go ahead and do that. Just post in the comment section. Okay, so let's move forward. So the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and make this a group. So I'm going to come in here and command click this so we can see the whole thing here. I'm going to take all of these nodes, right click on it, and 
and say group nodes or alt G, call this flakes. And let's expose some parameters. So we'll dive in. And the main thing that you want to do is you want to plug in the scale of all these so they keep the correct ratio. So once you find the correct ratio between these, um, you're going to want to basically make a slider that says scale and it changes these ones, this one, all three of these. Okay, so let's do that. So I'll add a value node. I'm just going to steal this one here. Call it flake scale. Change it to integer, not float. Float will give you decimals. And I'll set this to 50 because that's what our base was set to. We'll expose the parameter here. So command click, overall scale, plug this in, tidy it up. Command shift click on the node gives the rerouter. Let's also get the scale on this. So you can see this is 50% of 50. So that's why I picked these big even numbers. So it's easy to find the values. And to get 50%, we're going to double click and do a multiply. MUL, plug in our value into input here. And to get 50%, you just do 0.5. So we're multiplying 0.5. Plug that in. Boom. This one is also 0.5. So we can just plug this in here. And we want these flakes to be a different value here on the seed because these two are copied from each other. So that'll give us more variation. And then this one here, we'll make another multiply node, bring up the scale and we'll do 35%, so 0.35. So there is the flake scale. So that should work. Next, what we want to do is we want to plug in a seed value. So randomize. We'll plug it into this guy, this one, this one, and this one. We'll plug these in here. Seed, 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 seed. So those are all randomized. And I'm going to do one multiply node and create some variation because right now these are both set to the same value. I want to do a slightly different value of let's say 0.4, 40%. Plug that into this one here. So this one's 50%, this one's 40%, this is 35%. So it's much easier to see those. Okay moving along. So I'm going to now export this into its own path, the color option here. So right now we're doing roughness. We've got plugged in. So I'll name this one roughness, double click, drag this one in, add new output, call this one color, change the order, go out. And you can see now we have two. So if I wanted to export this color, just plug it in. If I wanted in the color or any of these that accepts color. And there's a bunch of properties that we could change, um, but I'm going to keep it simple. So we want the roughness values as well. So I'll take this here, change this to float and Float values can be zero to one. So I'll do roughness min max, plug this in here, min max. So now we can control the roughness values on that. We also want to do the uh, Fresnel mixer value. So that's our mask here, Fresnel amount. So when you take this slider, you're reducing the amount or adding it. We'll leave it turned up. We did the colors and that looks to be the base of what we need. So let's go ahead and try this thing out. So let's expose some of these parameters first. So first we want the randomized value, a new input, and you can see because we named them first, it links it in here. And you want to make sure you do these in order. So next I think I would want the flake scale. So I'm just clicking, dragging and clicking from the flyout menu. And next we'll do the roughness, min and max. And we'll do the Fresnel amount and the color start, color end like that. We go out and now you can see we have these values. Pretty helpful. So let's make Make the actual shader itself. So this is what we have so far. We have to change these values and fix them. So roughness min is going to be zero. Roughness max will can set to like 0.5. So it's not removing anything above 50% or 0.5 will reduce the shininess for null amount. You can see if I turn this down, we can see the flakes on the edges versus turning it up. You can see they're now fading out. We're not plugged into color, so these will have no effect. We can change the seed value and we can change the scale. So I'll do something like 15 to show you. So there we go. Set this back to 50% and let's set up our shader. So I'll pick like a red color and I'm going to remove the if from the emission and turn off the emission value. And what you're going to input this in is the rough is going to go into roughness and we're going to take the IOR and just crank it up to 2.5 so you can see they poking through now. Next what we want to do is we want these flakes to actually point the ray direction in different angles. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn up our anastropic ability here and you can see it starts twisting and we want to plug in to the rotation value so you can see if I turn this it changes the angle and that's what we want. So we're going to just take the rotation value and command click the dot and plug it into roughness, into color, sorry. And we're getting closer. Next, what we want to do is we want to turn up the coat, which will give us that glossy effect. And I'm just going to add a little bit of roughness to that highlight. So let's try the flake size down to 10. You can see there's the flake working. The last thing that we want to do is we want to be able to remove these flakes. You can see how they're consistently moving across the surface. And to do that, I want a slider that basically just masks them. And the best way to do this is if if I go to this base flake and solo it, put a slider. So I'm going to just take one of these roughness values here, put it here, and I'll call this remove flakes. And we want to move this 
low clip to mask it out. So command click, drag the low clip into here. And you can see we now have a slider that moves these down. And this is a linear slider. So you can see it's at 0.1 halfway at the halfway point. We'll fix that in a second. So let's plug this one in, turn the remove flakes. And you can see now when it's plugged in, it only goes from zero to one. You get weird results. You have to update the UI and we're gonna lose these. So if you decide to plug in more values, more value nodes into here, uh, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna screenshot these values or just remember them because it will reset these values. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll unsolo this and I'll show you how to adjust these uh, outputs to be with sliders and whatnot. I'm gonna right click in this panel right here and say edit resource and we get this scary window and you can see here is all our values. So randomized we want is it just a regular float or integer flake scale. We can put a slider if we wanted to. So I'm gonna do one. So I'm gonna say value limits. I'm gonna say max both. Set this maximum to 100 and then I'm gonna put slider values 0 to 100. So we have it 50 and maybe the float slider will leave it 100. Your flakes won't need to be, no matter how big your scene scale is, you won't need it past 100. Okay, so that's what I put for the flake scale. And you can see we now have a slider. The roughness min, we want the default values to be zero. Steps, we want step size 0 0.01. And then we'll put slider here. We'll set to one on the max. So now our roughness slider, you can see we have decimals and it works properly. We'll do the same for this one. Default value will set to one. Steps, we want to be 0 0.01. We want both. I'll set this to one and one. There it is. For null amount, same thing as this last one. Default value, we can do leave it at one. Step 0 0.01, both, slider min and max. Color start, that's fine. That's fine. Um, we'll do the start black, default, end white, remove flakes, 0.1. Let's do 0.01. That's how many decimal points for the slider, how, how much detail is in the slider in one. There we go. And remove flakes, I'm going to put just under this section here, under the flake scale remove flakes and then this is the correct order close it and there we go so now i can come back give this a color i like making mine 220 100 100 and there we go there's our flake shader so we can try out removing some of these flakes i'll say remove flakes there we go and this looks really nice when we have the scale down i'm going to put it small but you might not be able to see it so you can see we have separated flakes now versus consistent it looks really nice so if you're doing like low rider car paint you know on like a classic car you can have them kind of separate like that and it looks really really nice and this is a subtle shader so obviously you know if you wanted full flake like this you can just reduce this down to like 0.5 on the ior and you get this nice consistent flake across the surface that's nice and subtle and i think it gives a better result than the standard shipped flakes node so the last thing you we can show you is how to save this so if you want to save this as an asset you just come up select it go up to asset and say convert to asset and this will group it into a thing you'll give it a name i can save it into my preferences and i'll click this dot and say eric's eric's tools and then hey hit ok and it'll save and i can then just double click i can double click and you'd see it in my eric's tools node section that's it for this tutorial i hope you found it useful please like share and comment uh, if you have any questions or any kind of up and coming tutorials that you'd like to see please let me know in the comment section thank you so much don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.